there is the temporary housing floor, four walls and a roof, and we're going to strap it down very carefully uh, so it doesn't destroy my truck as I'm driving down the road. Load up a bunch of tools and take it out and I'm going to just figure it out when I get there. Should be entertaining. So we're installing the temporary well house. Uh, it's in pieces here. We've got the floor sitting at the, at the top and then the walls below it. We've set the cinder blocks over the top of the trench. We've kind of roughly laid these blocks out where they belong and we're going to set that floor on top of here and see what it looks like. There's our floor. done it without that. I knew you was just looking for a chance to use that thing. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll help us out a little bit. Finally to the point where we're installing the pressure tank in the temporary well house. So we got the tank up here in place. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, attach the troll assembly, I guess is what it would be. We've got a relief valve, pressure switch, and a gauge. Double pipe wrench did just fine there. <laughs> this is all temporary. When the house is done, this will all go into the garage and it'll be raised up off the ground on cinder blocks. And so I'm not 100% following every specific detail that you should if you were installing this permanently. Right now, we're just getting installed so we can get the water up and operational. So some of the stuff we prefab, right? We built this valve assembly. So this is a check valve. And this is our drop leg that goes underneath the well house. We've got the hole pre-drilled. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out some of the insulation and drop this down.
this is the entire system inside of the pump house. We come up with a 90 into a union to a glued threaded adapter into a check valve. This is an inch and a quarter check valve, inch and a quarter threaded adapter, female threaded adapter into the T assembly. We've got our gauge, our dump valve, our check valve, or uh, yeah, relief valve, excuse me, there. The pressure switch itself, and this T goes back and ties into the pressure tank. From the pressure switch, we come out, we're going into another adapter into an isolation valve, so we can isolate the system on the downstream side, never on the upstream side of the tank. Coming down to another union, which allows us to disassemble this easily. Comes up to a T, to a 45, this goes into a 90 inside the wall, which comes out to this spigot, so I can have water out here. We're going to go down through the floor and put a valve in line, so that we can isolate the pump house from the other water source. But that pretty much wraps up what's inside of the pump house. There will be a control panel, which I will cover shortly. Uh, the wiring will come from here to this valve. We have the wellhead and the pump house, and we need to get them connected together. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get the wire taken care of. So I pulled off the well cap, um, and inside it was the cable coil. Up. This cable runs all the way down to the pump. Uh, in this case, it's 226 feet, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But we need to get this thing installed so that we're able to put the cap back on. So this goes in here. Okay, that's there. And we've got a conduit. Our conduit's going to go up there. We've got a bell in here. I went down and picked up. So we have anti-chafing on it like we're supposed to. All right, we're ready for our splice finally. We've got our ends from the pump to the well house and our splice kit. So these adhesive strips will get put right here basically once we get the connections put together. Okay, it's very important you install the shrink tube before you connect the wires together. Otherwise you won't be able to connect the wires or you won't be able to heat shrink it. So we'll get that thing kind of down over there. Now we need to get these three, but they have to correspond. So you need to make sure that you line them up appropriately. So. So that and the other one, which will go right here, will allow the heat shrink tape to bond really well.
So with this done, I'm gonna let this cool down because right now it burned me. We'll basically push this down in the pipe and we can put the cap back on and we're pretty much done with the electrical in the wellhead. So we are installing 200 PSI barb fitting only water line. This is one inch water line that's gonna go from the wellhead to the pump house and eventually from the wellhead to the house. I've got my barbed adapter with the reducer from inch and a quarter to one inch. So I'm gonna warm up the end of this tube, get it pushed onto the barbed adapter. Well, I've got my hose clamps, but we will put them on tomorrow when I come back out. So for right now, we're gonna go ahead and put some thread tape on here, get this thing assembled. Grab some pipe dope, hopefully, that I have. What do we got here? All right, I got some pipe dope we're gonna goop on here. So this is our other end. We've got our barb fitting on here. We've kind of groomed the pipe a little bit. We've got our adapter, and we're gonna tie into this line right here. Well, we are digging the trench that I'm gonna put the conduit in that is going to be supplying power to the pump house. It's coming from the temporary power pole over there by the porta potty, and it's gonna run the length of the house hole, as you see here. And we're gonna put conduit in the ground so that later on, when we go to hook up the well permanently, I'll be able to pull the wire back out of the conduit so I don't have to buy the wire twice. But that conduit is just gonna stay in the ground and, well, it'll just be there. This is a pretty uh, awesome time lapse though with the tractor using the backhoe and getting it done. So we ran our conduit. We're going to go ahead and get the conduit down in the ground and get the wire run up into the well house. It's coming from the power panel. That one's coming from the well head. So this is a one inch piece of conduit that we're going to feed into the bottom of this box through this knockout. This is a temporary well house. So I'm, I'm using this enclosure as a junction for the wires, which is why both these wires are coming in. Normally you'd have a separate junction box and bring it to the switch and then back and down to the well. In any case, I'm gonna run both of these pigtail leads from the box out to where they belong. When this is permanently done, when it's installed in the house, um, There'll be a separate conduit or acceptor box where the lead will come from to the switch to the controller from the controller to the well.
So ignore all the extra wire. Just know that I'm going to try and reuse that. So what we've got is we've got a lead that comes from the temporary power pole that supplies power. That is going to get spliced or wired knotted together with this. That goes to the switch. And we have that lead seat here. And then it comes out and it goes up and that will come to the controller. From the controller, it'll go into this back set of wire. This wire will get unwired into here, which will power the well. So blacks go to blacks, red go to red. It just acts as a switch, right? So the water pressure pushes up on here and leaves the contactors open. As soon as the water pressure drops, the contactors shut. That's how it works. At this point, I need to replace one of these breakers because it's gone bad and then install the 30 amp breaker for the well. We're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to replace this 20 amp GFCI first with the new 20 amp GFCI. That's for the plugins down below to build the house. So let's get this thing opened up and switched out. So that's live. I just turned it back on. I want to test the GFCI breaker. So perfect. Both GFCI breakers work, so I have replaced that one. That's good to go. So this is the 30 amp breaker to the pump. At this point, uh, we should be able to just turn the breaker on and the pump should kick on and fill up the pressure tank. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this back up and we'll hit the breaker and see what happens. <laughs> I'm gonna cover it up as soon as I knock out those two knockouts. We should hit this and that pump should turn on. I turned that breaker on and the well worked. The pressure tank filled up with water, and water came out the spigot. Unfortunately, my battery is dead, and I didn't get any of that footage. But I am wrapping this video up. You're watching me backfill over the trench right now. I came over here to the wellhead, did a little hand shoveling to make sure I didn't damage the piping or wiring. Then I jump on the tractor and fill up the trenches, and we were pretty much done. Um, this went really well. It took several days over, over a course of several weeks based on having to build the house, install the house, do the wiring, do the plumbing, everything you watch me do. But this is going to wrap this one up. I really appreciate you guys watching. Definitely hope you got something out of this one. There was a lot of information out. If you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, it always helps me out in the long run. Check out some of these other links. I'll have the house build and my garage series. Check out the chapter videos. And until next time, thanks for watching.